Welcome back to Mr. Recaped. Today I will show you an action, crime, fantasy film from 2017, titled What Happened to Monday. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Human behavior has drastically impacted the environment and with an ever-increasing population, there is a dramatic shortage of food. To combat the crisis, the European Federation has developed genetically modified crops that are more resilient and have a high yield. This scientific breakthrough had caused a different problem. There is a staggering spike in multiple births and genetic defects globally. The solution is feeding the problem furthermore. The political activist and conservation biologist Dr. Nicolette Cayman has asked the Federation to institute a one-child-per-family policy, called the Child Allocation Act. She was successful in her efforts to push the legislation so the world is facing new restrictive measures. Illegally conceived siblings would have to be remanded in cryosleep. The children will be humanely stored in cryosleep until the global issues have been resolved. They will awake in a better world. A doctor approaches Terence Setman who is looking at his seven granddaughters in the nursery. He tells the grandfather that if they were better equipped they could have saved his daughter. Terence doesn't know who the father is because he hasn't spoken to his daughter in a long time. The doctor asks him how he will hide them. Terence says that he'll manage and names the girls after the seven days of the week. Thirty years later, we see one of the siblings on the street. Sunday is leaving the sector where she works. On her way home, she witnesses officers taking a sibling from a distraught family, under the Child Allocation Act. Then, she goes to a market and buys rat meat with an identity bracelet. Sunday enters her building and has a chat with the security guard Eddie, who tells her something that he feels he's already said to her before. Sunday enters the apartment and later is seen serving dinner to the rest of her siblings. Thursday thinks the food is gross, while Wednesday seems to enjoy it. Tuesday says that it's beautiful. Saturday jokes with Wednesday that she'd eat anything. They all laugh at her jokes except Monday. She's worried about a presentation she needs to give the next day. Thursday says that if they do get the promotion it will all be because of Friday, who's their resident genius. Terence can be seen in a flashback teaching them how they would operate in the world as one. He tells them that in time they will select a carrier that capitalizes on their collective strengths. Later, he's seen making a hidden room for the girls and then training them to hide their things and themselves at the time for that ever comes. Terence hides the rest of the stuff and walks over to Sunday, who's the only one left outside. Friday joins him as he makes copies of the identity bracelet for all of them. One day, he sits the girls down to explain the rules by which they will operate in the world. Each girl will be allowed to leave the house on the day that is their name. Inside the house, they can be themselves, but outside they will take on the singular identity of Karen Setman. Thursday asks if she can play outside and he answers that she may, but only if it's her day and never together with her sisters. They must never tell anyone that they have siblings. Tuesday is the first one to leave the house for school. As Terence takes her out, she gets overwhelmed by the crowd and stops. They enter another sector of the city and they scan her bracelet, revealing a successful copy. Terence drops her off at school and reminds her that she's the only Karen Setman. That night, he tells the girls that the meeting at the end of the day is when they should share all the details of the past day with their siblings. They watch Tuesday's video of the day. Cut to the present and Sunday is showing her videos from that day. The siblings feel sorry for the allocated girl and Wednesday makes a sly comment about Cayman. Thursday wonders about what would happen if they turned themselves to the cab. All of the women think that's a horrible idea. Monday seems to especially dislike it and the two of them argue. Thursday wishes to live free as herself and not as Karen Setman, a mask they put on one day a week. Wednesday and Saturday tell the two to stop arguing, so Thursday leaves the room saying how what they have isn't a life. In a flash forward, she remembers herself leaving the house on a Saturday after her sister and grandfather have left for the day. Later, Terence is questioning the rest of the girls about where she could have gone. Suddenly, she knocks on the door and the other girls hide. He gets a gun and opens the door to Thursday standing there with a hurt hand. She has lost the tip of her finger. Terence dresses her wound and scolds her. When he's done with her hand, he calls Monday and says that everything they do affects each other. He cleans Monday's hand with alcohol, gives her a shot, gets the cleaver, and sanitizes it with fire. What happens to one of them, happens to them all. He tells Monday to be brave and chops her finger off. At the present, it's a Monday. The day's namesake is sick and Sunday holds her head. Later, Monday scans her vitals and uses the information to apply her makeup. She leaves the apartment and arrives at a checkpoint to enter the sector where she works. She's stopped by Adrian, who bitches how he hates Mondays, but he's happy he gets to see her. She gets selected for questioning. Adrian questions her on the spot and they flirt a little, then he lets her proceed. Monday enters the bank where she works and is joined in the elevator by her colleague Jerry. They have an unpleasant conversation, where he implies that he might know something about her. Monday is worried. She doesn't come home that night and her sisters are worried because she's not answering her phone. Friday checks her bracelet, but her GPS locator is turned off and she can't find her. Tuesday is scared that she might be dead and the authorities find her before they do. She thinks their lives might be over too. 
Saturday seems chill about her being late, but Thursday comments that Monday has never been late for a meeting. The next day, Tuesday gets the scan. Saturday reads her results and helps her get ready. Thursday is angry that she'd eat a magic brownie. Tuesday says it's good for her nerves, especially since Monday is gone. Thursday tells her that she needs to act normal, but she isn't so sure she can do that. Tuesday steps off the elevator and Eddie tells her that he didn't see her come in the previous day. She gets to the checkpoint and passes through without a problem. When she gets to the office, Tuesday puts a communication device in her ear and talks to her sisters, telling them that they got the promotion. Her assistant walks in and Tuesday asks when she last synced her tablet because she forgot to log off. The assistant says that she left early to celebrate at her favorite bar. Tuesday goes to the bar and drinks with the bartender, asking her about the previous night. She says that she didn't stay long because her colleague annoyed her. Tuesday calls her sisters with what she found out and Saturday says that Jerry knows. Thursday thinks that she should question him because he might be the last person that saw Monday. Tuesday is stopped by agents from the Child Allocation Bureau and they tell her to get into a van. Once inside, the officer scans her bracelet and turns her GPS off. Friday tells the others she lost her. Tuesday is taken to the cab headquarters. Adrian sees her being walked inside for questioning. She's taken into a room where Cayman is waiting for her. Tuesday reluctantly shakes her hand and asks why she's there. The woman says that she's amazed she made it that far, considering they were seven children. Tuesday continues her rouse, but the agent gives Cayman a file showing there are five more sisters. The woman asks if there is another way and the agent tells her that there isn't if she wants to keep it quiet, then takes out a knife. Tuesday tries to bargain with Cayman, but she tells her that was what the last one said. She doesn't come back that night either and the others are restless and worried about her. Wednesday thinks they should go out and help her. Suddenly, they see armed men on their security cameras and freak out. The men walk into the building and kill Eddie. They use Tuesday's eye to get inside the apartment, but they don't find anyone because the sisters are hiding in their spot. Thursday goes to get her father's gun, though she finds the safe empty. The men find the hiding spot and tell the siblings to step out. The main guy asks where the last one is. Suddenly, Thursday hits one of them over the head and uses his body as a shield. Wednesday attacks the agent closest to her and fights him while Thursday incapacitates another one. When she tries to shoot him the gun fails and he fires at her, but Friday knocks him out with a bookshelf. He breaks out and takes down Friday. Wednesday gets trashed in her fight and when the main guy gets ready to kill her, Sunday throws boiling water on his face. Saturday attacks him with an iron and tries to strangle him with a cord, but he knocks her out. The main guy gets a knife and walks toward Wednesday when she manages to make him topple over. Thursday fights with the other one for his gun. Eventually, she manages to kill him. When the fight is over, the women see that Sunday shot in the gut. She says that she doesn't know who she is, then she dies. Meanwhile, Cayman visits a cab holding facility and tells the agent that she was assured that the children won't suffer. The woman has begun to feel guilty about what she has done, but the agent tells her that the parents are the guilty ones and that she is humanity's last hope. She springs back fast, telling the agent that they must localize the Setman problem because the scandal of seven siblings surviving to adulthood might ruin her. Besides, there is another complication in the situation, the fact that Jerry seems to know. Cayman tells him to deal with Jerry first. Back at the apartment, Friday finds Tuesday's eye in the main guy's pocket and they scan it to find out that it's hers. Midnight strikes and the sisters discuss what they should do. Thursday thinks that they need to come up with a plan because somebody wants them to disappear. The next day, Wednesday gets ready to leave but doesn't don the Karen mask. Friday pins a camera on her sweater so they can see and hear everything she does. Thursday gives her the gun even though they can't unlock it and tells her to go to Jerry's to find out everything she can. Wednesday exits their sector and proceeds to his place. He opens the door and lets her enter. Cayman's agent has his scope set on him. Jerry asks her if their deal stands, but since Wednesday doesn't know anything about it, he tells her that she needs to pass on the promotion so it goes to him and he'll keep her secret. She points the gun at him and asks how long he's known. Jerry says that if he didn't find the contract about the funds transfer, she would have been in jail by then. The contract was with Cayman, her new VIP client. Wednesday asks to see the contract when Jerry gets killed. The shooting continues, but Wednesday manages to close the shutters. The rest of the agents go in after her and an entire team shows up. She asks her sisters where she should go, but Friday can't help her. Wednesday hides in the bathroom while the agents check the apartment. One of them enters the bathroom. She struggles with him and kills him. The others hear them struggle, calling for the agent inside. When he doesn't answer they move in while Wednesday figures out what to do. She cuts his finger off and attaches it to her so she can use his rifle. The agents enter and she kills both of them. The last one calls the boss, but she kills him, sending him toppling over the building in front of the others. The rest of the agents move in as Friday finds her a way out of the apartment through a window. She lands in an empty dumpster and gets hurt. Wednesday still manages to get out and run with the agents after her. Friday takes her through a safe route. She runs into a building and the agents follow her in but get attacked by the people inside. 
Wednesday escapes the building and almost gets hit by the main agent's car. She continues to run unaware that he's tracking her. The agents see her and fire, killing innocent bystanders. Friday tells Wednesday that she needs to get her on the roof to get her home from there. Suddenly, there's a knock on their door. It's Adrian, and the girls think it's the cat. Wednesday is stuck until they figure out what to do. Saturday gets ready to open the door and the others hide. Adrian comments about her look, then tells her that he was worried when he saw her at the bureau. She lies that she was there to drop off some documents. He comes inside. Friday hangs up on Wednesday, leaving her stranded with agents coming in. Meanwhile, Adrian makes a pass on Saturday, but she panics and goes to the other room. Thursday thinks that she's the one who was seeing him, but Saturday swears she hasn't seen him before. Thursday tells her to get him back at his place to find out which one of them he's been seeing. Friday puts a coupling device in her bracelet so that she can get them access to the cab servers via Adrian's bracelet. Saturday confesses to her sisters that she's afraid that he might figure out it's not the sister he's been seeing because she's a virgin, but still changes outfits and leaves with him. Friday suddenly remembers Wednesday and tells her where she can find access to the roof. Wednesday runs there but realizes that she'll have to make a huge jump to the other building. Thursday convinces her to jump. When she does, she gets shot mid-air by the main agent. She holds on to the roof, but he finishes the job and sends the body to the processing center. Later, Saturday arrives at Adrian's apartment. She takes a shot of vodka and he kisses her. Simultaneously, Friday looks through the contract and finds out that Monday had transferred millions to Nicolette Cayman's campaign on the day they got the promotion. But she never managed to sign it. Saturday couples with Adrian and simultaneously couples with his bracelet. That allows Friday access to the cab servers. The next day Friday and Thursday get into the security feed of the processing center. Suddenly, they see that one of them is alive and they think it's Monday. Saturday wakes up next to Adrian and as he gets dressed for work, he tells her that there is a big event for Cayman that night. She wonders why he works for the cab considering how they treat children. Adrian asks her if she's ever been to the lower sectors and says that they're doing them a favor. As he's leaving he tells her that he wants to be with her every day, not just Monday. Adrian leaves and Saturday calls the others so they all exchange what they found out about Monday. Thursday thinks that Adrian is playing them but Saturday doesn't think so. Suddenly, agents appear in Adrian's apartment and in front of the Setman apartment too. They kill Saturday and gas the Setman apartment. Friday tries to download all of their data from their entire lives as proof that they existed, but Thursday makes her leave. The two escape through the fire escape and Thursday touches down first. Friday rolls the stairs back and returns to the apartment. The agents are coming up the stairs and she rigs the microwave to explode. Friday transfers all of the data to Thursday's bracelet and tells her to get Monday. She says that it's okay that she has to die because she wouldn't make it without them. The agents get ready to enter, she tells her big sis she loves her and the microwave explodes taking out the entire floor. Thursday lost all of her sisters, save one. Meanwhile, Adrian hears about the explosion over the radio and immediately goes there. He enters the building as they are taking out Friday's body. Adrian thinks it's his Karen and freaks out. He sees them take the body to the processing center and gets back in his car where Thursday is waiting for him. She says that he sold them out, but he has no idea what's going on. Thursday doesn't believe that he doesn't know who she is at first, but he figures it out and she confirms it for him. She tells him that the woman he slept with and the one he saw in a body bag aren't his Karen. Thursday tells him that Monday, or rather Karen is alive and being held in the processing center. He says that he loves Karen and Thursday tells him that if he really does, he has to help her. She has a plan. Later, a Setman body is being taken to processing. Adrian is the one taking the body in. Simultaneously, the agents return to cab. Adrian is being led inside the facility where he transfers the body to the nurses. He sees them preparing a child for cryosleep. They get her inside the pod and give her a sedative. Thursday sees the procedure from the body bag. The nurse locks in the pod and begins the procedure which doesn't freeze the child but burns it out of existence. The next pod appears and it's Thursday's turn. The nurse asks why the body isn't burned and the agents find their men incapacitated in the back of a van. Thursday pushes the nurse inside the pod and begins the procedure, while Adrian fights the men outside. Then Thursday struggles with the other nurse and subdues him in the end. Neither of them can believe what Cayman has done, she has killed them all. Thursday finds the room where they are keeping Monday and they go after her. Once they go inside, however, Thursday realizes that it's Tuesday and tells Adrian. They ask Tuesday what happened to Monday. Simultaneously, she walks into Cayman's office and she asks her if she was enjoying her stay. Monday says she was more than comfortable. Cayman says that with Karen's donation and her push for parliament they might still save the earth. Meanwhile, Thursday tells Tuesday to take the wig off because she has another plan. Monday is reluctant to sign the contract and Cayman tells her that she kept one of her siblings alive because someone willing to give up their flesh and blood can never be fully trusted. She signs and Cayman asks her how it feels to be the one and only Karen Setman. In the meantime, 
Thursday has already changed into Karen and is telling Tuesday to get into the main server before Cayman's speech. Adrian will take her there, while Thursday goes to the event for Cayman's campaign. Tuesday and Adrian get to the server, pretending that she has him hostage and make the guards open the door. He subdues them and they go inside with Tuesday getting into the main server immediately. The agents track them down there, so Adrian tries to fight them off. Thursday is in the washroom when Monday walks in and gets the gun out. At the same time, Tuesday accesses the live feed. The main agent realizes he needs to get to Cayman and leaves the others to deal with it. Thursday and Monday argue about the meaning of family and sacrifice. Monday tells her that she fell in love with Adrian and everything changed for her. Thursday makes a speech about how Karen Setman belongs to all of them, but Monday tells her that as the firstborn she was the real Karen and the rest were after birth. Thursday disarms her and they fight. In the meantime, Cayman begins her speech about overpopulation and shows the audience her statistics. While that's happening, Adrian blocks the agents from coming in and Thursday kicks the gun away as the two fight. Monday goes after it, but the fight continues in a stall. At one point it looks like both Thursday and Adrian are losing, as Tuesday finally uploads the processing video. Thursday and Monday are struggling for the gun and it fires. One of them is dead. Adrian fights off the last remaining agent and kills her. Cayman talks about the possibility of a better future. A Setman sister walks into the hall of the event and Tuesday plays the video. It shows up on the main screen in the event hall and everyone witnesses what child processing really means. Cayman says that they didn't suffer, then realizes that the Setman sibling is at Monday. She asks her if she knows what she has done. Monday appears but the main agents kill her before she can shoot. Then Adrian kills him and runs to Monday who's still alive. She has a flashback of their grandfather crying the day he chopped their fingers off. He tells her that he just wants to protect them and apologizes to her. Thursday takes her hand and Monday begs her to promise her not to let them take her children. Adrian comes to her side and she dies. Later, the Child Allocation Act has been revoked. Children are being released from allocation camps and pregnant women come out of hiding. Cayman holds a press conference and asks who will make the difficult decisions that will ensure the survival of humanity. She only regrets that their children won't know the world they could have built together. Thursday, Tuesday, and Adrian are watching Monday's babies being taken to term in a medical facility. Tuesday says that she has chosen the name Terry and Thursday tell Adrian to call her Karen Setman. They have come to realize that Monday did it all for them so they can be safe. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.